Hey y'all, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws and welcome to the fourth video in my advanced programming in monkey tutorial series. So now that I've shown you how to make generic classes, I'm going to use the next couple of videos to introduce you to some of the generic container classes that come with monkey that are great for adding extra functionality to your programs. And the first two I'm going to go over in this video are lists and maps. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first thing in this video we're going to go over is the list container. Uh, I'm not going to go into every aspect of these classes, so you should definitely check out the documentation on them, which I'm going to provide a link to below. Uh, I'm just going to cover basic usability to get you started on these. Now lists are a lot like arrays except they have some a bunch of extra methods along with them to help you manipulate your data a little easier. So to start off making a list, create a local variable and we're just going to make a list of integers. And one thing to know is that monkey comes with certain lists by default like int list, string list, float list, things like that just so you don't have to create these lists manually but I'm just going to show you for educational purposes I'm going to show you how to create an integer list by scr from scratch so what you'll do is you use the list class name that comes with monkey and you're going to pass it a, the generic type you want to use in this case int and we'll initialize it with an empty integer list now to fill your list up there are a couple functions that you can use first one being I'll add last and what this does is just adds whatever item you specify to the end of your list in this case it's empty so it's really gonna add this to the first position but I'm just gonna show you at last and of course alternatively you can do add first and this will add the item to the beginning of your list and shift everything else down so in this case, I had 56. 56 is there first. Then I add 23, so it sticks it 23 at the top spot and it moves 56 down. So if it's not obvious already, the advantage to using lists and these add first and add last methods over in a, just a plain old array is that with an array, when you want to add something to the beginning of an array, you have to resize it, shift everything down, and then stick it in the first spot which as you can tell takes up it's not too incredibly much code but it's a lot more code than just one line like this right right so once you've populated your list there are a couple methods you can use to find some things out about your list such as how many items are in the list and for that you just use the count method not to be confused with length with the arrays you use count with lists and say you wanted to access the first thing in your array off the bat you can just use the first method that will give you the first item in your array and alternatively you can use last to get the last item in the array so now let's say you're done accessing all these items and you want to remove all the stuff so one way to remove things from the list is to use the remove each method and if you sure you can guess it will remove each occurrence of a value in this list so I'm going to pass in 56 and it's going to remove each occurrence of 56 leaving just 23 and this will work if I were to add 56 again it would add both it would remove both of those leaving 23 by itself and alternatively you can use the remove first which will remove the first item in the list and remove last which will remove the last item in the list now with these remove first and remove last methods what it will actually do is remove the item and but return the value that was just removed in case you want to do something else with it after you removed it from your list so in this case we have a list of numbers and I want to kinda just so I can see what's going on I'm gonna print out whatever numbers I removed as I removed them so we're going to create a little uh, for each in loop and we're gonna 
assign num to each value in our number list. And then we're going to create a temporary variable of int type to store the value we just removed, or the item we just removed. In this case, I'm going to start. I'm going to remove first. So it's going to remove the first item. Shift everything up. Next time it goes through, remove the first item, and so forth until the thing's empty. And then I'm going to print and say temp was removed from the list. Close that off, and let's compile this. I can see what just happened, and I got an eagle operation on an empty list. Oh, helps to remove the. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. And there you go. 23 was removed from the list, and 56 was removed from the list. And finally, if you don't want to bother with going through each item in the list and removing it, you can just simply call number list dot clear, and that will clear everything else else out and give you an empty array once again, or excuse me, an empty list once again. And like I said, there's quite a bit more functionality I'm not going to go over in these videos just because I want to get through all these classes and get on to more fun stuff. But you should definitely check out the documentation. They have There's a method for converting this list to an array, and you can also get into the lower level node stuff. It's kind of neat. So you should definitely read it over, check it out, play with it. But for now, we're going to move on to maps. Okay, and we're going to clear this back out reset and with maps the thing about maps they're kinda like lists ex except what they do is you take a certain you'll have a key of any type which you will link to a value of any other type or the same type so, so instead of having just like with an array you have an integer index in order linked to a value right but in this case, you, your key or your index doesn't have to be in any order. It doesn't have to be an integer. It can be a, anything of any type. So, you know, so basically, how maps work is they take two generic types and link them together. But the thing about maps is you can't just call, you can't just use map. You can't just create a variable of type map and give it two types to use. Although I wish you could. So what's required is you have to extend the map class with the class that you create with this, with another map class. Confused? Me too. But not after this, I promise. So what we'll do, let's say we want to link uh, people, like a people, the name of a person to their identification number, their social security number or any other identification number. So what we're, what we're linking in this case is a string to an integer and what we're going to call this map is the person map now, what we're cre actually creating is a generic class that extends the map class so we need to give it a generic type identifier which in this case I'm just going to go with T and then it's going to extend map and once we get to the map, we're going to give it two classes. The first one being our key type, in this case is the uh, integer for our identification number, and then our generic type, T. And then inside this class that we've created, there's just one method that's required to create because these map, the map class in monkey is set up with one abstract method if you remember abstract methods have to have definitions later on in the code and that abstract method is the compare method and what monkey needs this compare method to do is to just take one key and compare it with another key and return a negative value if key one is less than key two zero if they're the same or a positive value if key one is more than key two. So what we'll do, we'll just return key one minus key two, which will give us exactly what we need. A negative number if this is less than this, or a positive number if this is greater than this. 
All right, so now that that's created, that's all you gotta do for a map to set it up. So now we will create our map of people, and we're gonna call it people, and it's gonna be a person map type. We want to link it to the name of people, so a string, and we'll create a new person map, empty person map, that links a person to a string or an integer to their name and close that off. Now as with list, monkey comes with a bunch of maps by default such as int map, I can spell them out for you, int map, string map, and float map. So which is essentially the int map is actually what we were creating here because it maps this int keyword to something else. So we could just change this to int map and it does the same exact thing but I'm showing you how, I just wanted to show you how to create maps from scratch for other purposes. Like if you wanted to link maybe a person type to a string, you do that here, you list the, and create a person class and you'll be able to use it that way. Of course you'd have to change your compare method to use this person type, but that wouldn't be too difficult, right? Right. I'm going to change this back to int. And now that our person map is created and initialized, we're going to start adding some people to our person map. So we're going to call our people variable name dot add. And this is how you add new keys, new key value pairs to our map. So in this case, we're going to just come up with some random number for this, identify this person, and then their name. This guy's name is Fred. Then you can add another one. Call this uh, this person is uh, Sally, Fred and Sally. Now, alter alternatively, if you want, you can add people using the set method, which is w what I prefer. Like, uh, random number. Call this person Gary. Now, the difference between add and set is that add will only go through and add these people if this key isn't already in the map. If this key is already in the map, it's going to return false and it's not going to change the value that's in there. While set, set will actually so let's say I wanted to say set and then one, two, three, four, five for the Sally, I want to change her name, update it, something like Sally Ann. Set will actually update the value in the map to the new value. But because it's also because it's already there, it's going to return false. Well, this one's going to return true, saying, hey, I created a new one when I did this. And what this one's going to say false. While it did update, it's just saying false, I didn't create a new one. It's already in the list, but I did update it. So that's the difference between add and set. Now, once you set these values, if you want to get them, you just use the get method. You're going to specify your key. So we're going to get, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and that's going to return an integer or no, excuse me, it's going to return a string, and the string will be Sally Ann. And now once you've done that, if you want to loop through everything in your map, this is where it gets a little tricky, but it's really not that bad. So you create a for each in loop, and what you're going to do is you're going to use the key, you need a variable of the key type, or excuse me, you're going to use a variable of the map's key type, which in this case is int, and we're going to get each key in this list or in this map by using the keys method on your map and then we will print and I'm going to say their identification number is key and then their name is people.get and then that particular key okay and so in case you don't believe me Build, and then you can see the identification number. You can see Sally Ann was updated, and Fred and Gary. And you may notice something here that Sally Ann, Fred, and Gary. This is in the order that I created my, that I added my values in. I actually added Fred, then Sally, then Gary. But what happened was, Monkey with Maps, it automatically sorts your map by the key. That's where that compare function, that compare method comes into play. It sorts it automatically using that compare method. So it, it compares two keys together or it goes through and compares all the keys together until it finds the right spot. 
now if you want to remove people from your map you just use the remove specify which key to remove gets rid of it and of course just like with the lists you can remove everything by using the clear method and that's the basic functionality of the map and just as before there's some more stuff in that you can do with maps that I don't really feel I need to go over right now so check it out in the documentation you know play with it you'll love it I promise um, so thanks for watching stay tuned for the next video we're gonna go over stacks and sets we're gonna stack them and then we're gonna set them and then we're gonna set them and we're gonna stack them see you there